So can you guys hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. I think most people I see white dots. Great. And just Chris, can we uh can we hear you too for a second? Hello, here I am. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, right. so I'm gonna intro you and then uh, we can kind of start things off. Let me reposition myself. I'm doing kind of a bunch of stuff at once. I'm actually testing out um, YouTube's live streaming um, as well. So I'm recording and streaming this at the same time. Um, and I, I can give you guys that link for later. Actually, I can give it to you now too if you want to share it with anybody outside of here. Here's this. Sure. There you go. So if somebody isn't in Second Life, they can still follow along. Okay. So today we're happy to have as our future presenter, presenter um, Chris Delatori, who will give a rundown of exciting changes to the TechSoup community forum slated for next year, and share on his work and recent events in New York and Insta Istanbul. Um, Chris is an independent communications consultant for science, um, and let me actually copy this as I go to. Chris is an independent communications consultant for science, technology, and global philanthropy uh, initiatives, including Wings and TechSoup Global. So you can find him over at the TechSoup forums. And Chris is a writer and editor and content producer, a storyteller with chops in hard and social science. Chris's previous experience in, uh, oh, sorry, he's a system, he's a systems junkie, specifically uh, built environments and social structures. His multimedia resources, his multimedia resource, Compass, was named model program by the U.S. Department of Education. And Chris has previous experience in pharma, pharma, pharmacogenomics and human rights <laughs> activism. I know, and uh, there's a word. And human rights activism. Yeah. And his current research focuses on creating a framework for distributed social networking for CSOs. And he is invested in very community. sloppy word, especially if you're researching. <laughs> uh, he is interested Sorry, yeah. in, in communicating the viability of science and emerging uh, technology as they relate to sustainable urban development and social relations. And lastly, he's a New Yorker, a dog, a dog lover, caffeine freak, zombie hunter, and sci-fi geek. He believes in the power of science, empathy, and community. Um, and I'll, from with that, I'll let you take it from here, Chris. And thanks for being oh, great. here. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna get right into my presentation then. Sure. Oh, perfect. Okay, so um, first of first off, you know, it's it's great to be here. I was just saying that that word pharmacogenomics is very sloppy. It's even sloppier if you're doing the work, if you're in the laboratory trying to do the work, because what we were basically doing with that is try trying to understand the human genome um, on a personal level so that we could personalize medicine rather than go through all of these really messy clinical trials and kill a lot of people um, and going through those clinical trials. So yeah, that was at the very beginning when we first cracked the genome, we were doing that work. Um, pretty exciting time. Uh, so hi, everybody. Um, it's great to be at Nonprofit Commons. Um, now, first, I want to thank Rhiannon Chatnoir for inviting me to the Nonprofit Commons Amphitheater. Um, it's my first time in Second Life. So, well, not my first time, but, you know, it's the, what, my third time now or fourth time. Um, and I haven't spent uh, a lot of time here, so I'm still sort of learning the ropes. But uh, it's great to have the, to, to have the, Rhiannon's been extremely generous with her time here and helping me to assimilate to my new body. Uh, and I actually flew for the first time this week, and I have to say I love it. So that said, I haven't quite fallen from the nest yet, so so bear with me if I if I stumble a bit. Um, so Rhiannon, thank you. And is Glitteractic a cookie here? I'm not sure if... Okay. Yeah, there's a lot going on today. I just I just saw that we have like three or four 
events happening today. Well, I just wanted to, to thank her actually for getting me into Second Life. Um, as you know, Susan Tenby, aka Glitter, or Glitter Actica Cookie, aka Susan Tenby, uh, in the other world. Um, she uh, shared a Business Insider piece in April uh, in the TechSoup sort of uh, stream that, that got me thinking about how we might factor virtual reality into the new vision for the TechSoup community that's taking shape um, for next year and beyond. So there are a few aspects to, to building the community we'll be talking about. Um, and as you know, Susan knows a lot about the history of the forums. So we'll want her advice um, on features and strategies as we play with them and eventually roll them out next year. So, you know, a big, a big shout out to Susan um, for all of you who know her. And all of you, really, we'd like for our community um, and for anyone who is interested in knowing more about the TechSoup Community Forum um, to, to really get involved as we go forward. And, and I'll give you a few uh, pointers later. Um, one is a survey. So I'd like to take a tally at some point during the meeting or after of those of you who are interested in maybe um, giving us you know, your take on what you'd like to see the forums become. So, so let's get, get right into it. Um, let me just whiz right around here so I can so I can click the next slide. Uh, oh, good, there we are. All right, there I am. Um, now, I'm not sure if you got my, uh, let's see. There we go. Wait. There we go. So I'm not sure if you, if you um, know where to find me, but, but here are my links. You can learn more at about.me and my full name, um, or you could uh, connect with me on Twitter. Um, I like to share a lot of cool links on Twitter too, so feel free, hit me up anytime. So, let's get right into it here, sorry. Here we go, all right. <clears throat> so first a little bit about me. Um, i uh, communications consultant, I have 10 plus years in print research, uh, new media, uh, I've done private, public, and social initiatives, based in New York, born here, uh, grew up in New York and New England, um, so that's me and Skinny, and I'm, thanks for introducing my work there. Now, first as a, as a kid, I always loved, like, I was obsessed with dioramas. I was obsessed with, I loved toy trains. I loved anatomical models. Um, I also was a big sort of outer space fan. I was, I was into Star Wars. I was into Star Trek. Um, also, my brother and I got into a few early computer simulators. Uh, and this was before the internet kind of blew up. So we were super, super young. And he was just like this genius. He was taking apart like Commodore 64s and 120s and putting them back together again and doing all this weird stuff. And I was just watching him do it. Um, but I would get into the, the, the whole fictional spaces with him and we would explore these new worlds using simulators. And we actually like use graph paper, I remember, for one simulator, Starflight. I don't know if anybody um, has, has used that one. But it was really exciting to chart these new worlds and kind of figure out, you know, how certain things in real life could play online. And so that's why I'm like really excited to, to dive into the second life experience, because I think it will um, literally revolutionize the space going forward. And I'd like to see how we can pull some of that into the forums, community plans that we have. Um, so exploration definitely always interested me. Uh, I started my professional career as a genetic scientist, um, specifically pharmacogenomics research in the private sector. Um, we use proprietary technologies to personalize medicine. Um, and this is when I first began to see how biological systems principles also work with non-biological structures. So for instance, the, the metabolism of the city, um, that's something that I've been thinking of a lot lately because of urban sustainability initiatives are going forward. We're going to have to figure out how all of the different elements of the city work because we're going to have 6 billion plus people living in cities by 2050. It's going to be like two thirds of the global population at that point. Um, and we're seeing a huge migration of people into cities worldwide, especially in Africa and uh, or uh, rather in Asia and um, and uh, Latin America and a lot and actually Africa too has a lot. A lot of growth right now. So things like that, like natural forces, biotic versus abiotic factors in community de development, you know, uh, natural versus man-made conditions, that kind of thing. So now, many years later, um, 
I, in addition to TechSoup, I manage editorial and content for a global membership association, Wings. Uh, it's a, net, a meta network, actually, that represents 20,000 philanthropic entities. Um, a lot of those same principles still apply here, and my work has really shown me how the world is a lot smaller and actually a lot bigger than you think. So, you know, I, I feel like we can pull a lot of those um, biological principles, the science principles, into what we do every day on a network kind of level, a uh, global philanthropy level. Um, <clears throat> so it's an exciting time, really. In between that, I've done a lot of editorial work, messaging, storytelling, uh, lots and lots and lots of activism, which I know some of you in this room are, are very um, involved with and, and passionate about. Um, some more organized. I was at Lambda Legal here in New York, marriage equality campaigns, uh, trans campaigns, youth, um, GLSEN, that kind of thing. We, we had a, a, a nice coalition of partners going. We really started to gain momentum with marriage, with uh, marriage equality in, in the U.S. around 2008. And there had been things that had been done before that, but 2008, really, we started to gain momentum. And this was before Prop 8. We had just one California when I came on board with Land Legal. Back then, it was state by state, and it was a lot of sweat, you know, a lot of cross fingers, a lot of prayers, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, you know, it just goes to show that how ensuring individual agency is a big deal to me. I, I really take it personally, and, and I'm very passionate about giving people a voice and really seeing what kinds of uh, issues matter to different people in, in different situations, different countries, um, you know, from different cultures. And uh, uh, in early 2011, um, well, if you remember the Arab Spring, you know, Egypt, Egyptian revolution was early 2011, I think, February, end of February. I was waking up sick every day uh, from the reports that, that I was hearing um, from Egypt. And I would get, sometimes I would get text messages or phone calls, you know, WhatsApp or, or, or phone calls or whatever. Um, just knowing that my friends were in that kind of situation was a pretty stressful kind of moment for me. Um, and that was a really rough year. Year for that entire year was very rough for me on a number of different levels. I had lost a few friends that year, and it's just a lot of stuff was happening. So, so when this happened, it was just sort of like a, a really um, a big moment for me where I experienced a lot of growth. And kind of if you raise the forest, you know, raise the forest, if you will, and, and start brand new. That's pretty much what happened to me during that phase of my life. So, empathy played a big, big role um, in my engagement during all of that, which is the point. And, and later, of course, with Occupy um, here in New York, it was a matter of, of bringing that story from Zuccotti Park uh, here in the city to, to the mainstream media um, that had ignored it for weeks before the blogosphere forced the networks to cover it. So it was interesting that whole period of time where you, you really you could really f sense the power of grassroots uh, engagement um, because we literally forced the mainstream media to cover this issue because they had suppressed it for, I think it was almost three weeks. Um, the mainstream media downtown had suppressed this story happening, but we were furiously writing about it. And then after a while, they were just forced to pick it up. So then we started to talk about it. And as you know, since then, it's just sort of become this global kind of phenomenon. And there, are, it's very controversial, but it's in the collective consciousness, which is which is why we wanted to do that. Um, as forum community manager for TechSoup, I'm researching strategies with the team for engaging uh, engagement growth. Um, and that actually includes new technology and a multi-task uh, stakeholder platform, rather, that we have that we're that we're looking at, um, and which we'll actually get into to in a minute. So, as we'll see over the coming months, there is a lot of potential for our global brand to gain traction uh, and really shape the discourse in many places in the world. And I'm, that's really what excites me the most about what we're doing here. I mean, the fact that we can really work the brand to shape the discourse um, and, and really just, you know, push our mission through in that fashion, because really it's going to start from the ground up, right? That's what we're all about. 
um, is about helping nonprofits and community initiatives through uh, technology, with the, providing them with the technology they need to 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 you know um, fulfill their missions and their goals. So there's lots more to me. So please connect with me online. Um, Twitter is the best of the big social. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, we'll, we have a lot of chats there and I cover events there and post industry links and things. So and I also have a blog, <clears throat> but you can choose. So um, please remind me that um, that we met here when you're connecting with me. So I can sort of, you know, know where I met you and, and put you in that, um, in that list so I can follow up. So that's me. Um, now briefly what we'll cover, I, I might not need the full half hour, but I, I think we, we have a lot to cover. So, you know, I, I'd like to take some questions at the end if you have them. Um, but, uh, you know, so we'll go from there. Um, if you need something, uh, you know, we can use the extra time for that. So first, a rough outline of next steps um, for the forums and a few ideas we have for the space that will benefit everyone. And of course, build a community in the process. Um, and we'll take a few, uh, uh, we'll also talk about a few events later. Um, but we'll get to those after the, uh, the main one is actually the recent social good summit in New York. Um, and I had a chance to interface with some of the net squared folks there, which was great. Uh, Eli, Vander Glesson and um, some of the, the, the lead organizers. And two, the other event, uh, actually two other events um, in New York, and then an event in Turkey on social media that you might be interested in. So we'll get to that at the end. So let's get to the next slide. <clears throat> so make sure we have time to cover everything here. All right, great. So the new platform. Um, over the coming months, we'll be transitioning to a multi-stakeholder platform, so a space where we will uh, engage many different types of professionals and, and people and, and you know, community leaders um, and nonprofits around a number of issues. Eventually, it will be an open platform where people can connect around their like interests, uh, around technologies, new applications, community, nonprofit issues, things like that. Um, a big component of this will be a space where experts share their knowledge and answer questions on specific topics. So in that respect, it, it will be, we hope that it will be a go-to resource for community members um, to talk about new technologies and, and best practices and that kind of thing. So a, a nice thought space, nice uh, space for, for thought leadership. If you think about what's happening, for instance, now with LinkedIn, where a lot of um, thought leaders are uh, able to promote their messages and really connect one-on-one -on -one with people um, where they, you know, normally would not have that opportunity. That's something I think that we can definitely do in the forums, in this new forums platform, and sort of mimic some of those uh, best practices from the big social media, um, you know, uh, cluster, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, use some of what's working for them and, and appropriate it, use it for, for, for our needs. Um, the specifics of the platform are still on the table. So we're still in a, a growth phase now, which uh, is great for everyone because it means that you all have the opportunity to lend your voices to the, the conversation and really let us know what you might think um, is a good idea or, you, you know, good innovative practices to pull in or something that you think is missing from other communities that you might want to see in TechSoup. Questions like, who is this for? Uh, who will be involved? How to integrate different types of content? Uh, will some content be members only, secret groups, that kind of thing? Um, that's what we're thinking about right now. And that's why it's um, uh, so exciting to meet, to meet folks like Eli you know, in person, we've been working together for, for months now, but in person and with the NetSquared team in New York um, last week to talk about, you know, how we might use this space between events and meetups. Um, and that's just one example. Uh, oh, good. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And please, Rand, like, stop me if anyone has any questions that are that are urgent or, or anything. Please feel free to stop me. I just want to make sure I fit everything in here. Um, 
I did want to talk about some of our other initiatives too in house, like Nonprofit Commons, for instance, is one example. Net Squared is another. Caravan Studios, I know, and and uh, Susan can speak more to this. But Caravan has a number of hot apps going. Um, you all may know some of those apps. But Safe Night, I think that's one big one um, that that we use to place uh, victims of domestic violence into hotel rooms uh, during emergencies. It's like the crowd funding app, um, and it's it's been very successful. Um, and also four bells, you know, things like that. These apps will inevitably form communities, right? So, so like a test, testing case that's used to sex stories, stuff like that. We really want to create a space where we can um, facilitate some of those conversations. And it's a no brainer. It's like these are, it's a, under the TechSoup umbrella and these are really important um, uh, products that we're producing that, that, that are gaining traction um, so we should definitely facilitate those conversations. Uh, the forum will be the best place for these new communities and subgroups to really take off. So, so I'm looking at how to integrate the brands that currently exist under the TechSoup umbrella into the new platform first, um, then a system for partners, like a, maybe a brand exchange or a way to bring marginalized groups in um, and specialized groups, right? I mean, some of these things we can do ahead of the full rollout. Um, but we also need to, to give planning time to this, to organize it as best we can. Elements like tagging, branch structure, semantics, things like that, uh, to give us an idea of what the nonprofit tech community at large is looking for from the forums. Um, so we're running a survey now, and I will, I'm not sure if that's actually available right now, but I'll definitely, I'll make sure um, that Rhiannon can, can share that with all of you in a follow-up um, in another, you know, following session here, um, if it's not available right now. So we'll take a tally after to see who's, who's um, interested in, in getting involved with that. So moving on. <clears throat> so we have some distinct spaces that will uh, grow up around this new platform. One will be a chat zone, and this this is still on on the table. But we're we're fairly certain that that you know these we're going to want these spaces to sort of be distinct spaces that can grow up around each other. So we have three three main ones that we're thinking now. One is a a, a, a chat zone for topics like nonprofit tech, civil society, uh, activism digital engagement, best practices, that sort of thing, similar to a lot of what we already have in the forums now, but more like more nuanced. Um, we're not sure what these spaces will necessarily look like right now, but that's the point, I think, to dive in with the general sense of, of what we want and see what grows up around these concepts. Um, how the community shapes these spaces will be very important. Uh, and this will be where groups like NetSquared come in, on the nonprofit commons, because ultimately these groups are driving this type of conversation. Um, and even if these groups exist elsewhere in, in the, you know, in the metaverse <laughs> um, online, I, I feel like it's, uh, you know, it's, it's really good that we give these groups, um, uh, you know, their own branded kind of spaces within the community to really further a lot of, and to, to really up the, the visibility of our partnership as well. Um, because we, we're all working together on this. So I think as many people know um, what we're working on together and how we're connected, the better. Things most of us talk about when we, when we want to change the world. That's what space one will be. Um, but we all know that changing the world without technology is impossible at this point uh, in human history. So space number two um, we're back to apps and products, which really drives the TechSoup brand as well, because I mean, this is, this is our main offering, right? We are, we exist to, uh, facilitate the social sector with technology and best practices and so that we can keep up with the innovations that are happening, um, in the private sector beyond. A few branches here, lots of potential to grow the brand. I feel and regain some of the trust we lost when the forums weren't so active. I mean, we went 
through a period of inactivity where a lot of people kind of fell out or dropped off and technology, you know, moved forward at such a, a, a fast rate that when we got back in, there were a few glitches that we had to kind of think about and work on. And now that's what we're doing. We're working on bringing that back up to speed so people can engage in a more meaningful uh, and more seamless, more ubiquitous manner. Um, things like validation services, customer service, expanding the catalog. So we have sub branches for, for all of our products. These are, yeah. Um, and this is where Caravan Studios comes in as well, because we, we have a community built around that brand. Uh, and it's a pretty strong brand, right? I mean, we have, we have apps like the ones I mentioned before. Oh, and there's C Click Fix. That's another one that I, that I really like, um, which is a community, another community app that I, that I really love. We have hackathons though, you know, things like that. I mean, what's happening, um, in that space is very exciting right now. And I believe, do you know about something called the generator, Rhiannon? That Karen was working on where it was like this, uh, mm -hmm. is that still active? Yep, and actually okay, Glitter great, Glitteractica because... is here now. So she's she's the pink cat kind of in front of you. Oh, great, I see you now. Hey, do not run high that. Oh, okay, hey, <laughs> how are you, how are you, Glitteractica? Um, yeah, so like the, the basically what I was saying with the hackathons was, you know, some of our um, idea generators, uh, some of our partnerships or collaborations we work on with outside groups. Those are the kinds of things that we can definitely talk about. We can bring those to the spaces. So we might ne not necessarily host these hackathons, but if, or, you know, if other but if we're um, interfacing with other community groups in these areas, that's something that we might pull into the forums as a, a thread or a specific branch for community events that we might collaborate on, that kind of thing. So really the, the options are, are, are endless, um, like a think tank, if you will. So we can carve out a space for projects like that, um, depending on how we organize things, the nomenclature, we could feature the apps with the products and have events and things like that. Um, you know, and then we can also link it to civil society and activism, right? So to the other vertical, if you will, uh, and have them connect to each other to encourage traffic between community events, things that are happening right now, and the actual products that are facilitating those events, because that's how they, the two match up. Um, product launches are definitely one example, but we can also highlight technology we're using for actual events or uh, we can have some of our members, you know, talk about the, the technology that they're using in their offices, for instance, um, the computers, the laptops, the servers, um, the security software, you know, which programs are the hottest, uh, what do our people trust and, and use most and why, that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, what I was going to say, I mean, what, one challenge with the current layout is keeping product threads organized, I've seen. Uh, that's a, a major challenge, just keeping everything uh, available at, at a, a bird's eye or at a glance. To a certain degree, yes, you'll have random posts and redundancies, but I think a big part of the restructure, uh, the restructuring might be to give our product partners, say Microsoft, Intuit, Adobe, um, Better World Wireless, or now Sparrow, actually, Better World Wireless. Now Sparrow, giving them prime real estate so, so we can direct our community members to those conversations more efficiently, um, which will, I think, reduce frustration in the long term uh, and confusion. And in the process, you know, that may, if we're lucky, free up some space for other conversations, other threats. So, so space one is, is for civil society, best practices, community groups, events, more the conversation for conversation's sake, space for current issues, like more fluid. And then uh, space two would be more like for products, our donation program, but also our apps and other products, basically a driver for the business side of TechSoup, curated resources, conversations like uh, product soup chats that we've had in the past, that kind of thing. We might want to, to bring those back as, as resources, best practices, um, tailored, FAQs, you know, and this brings us to the bridge, which is the third space, um, which we'll get into right now. 
And the third space, really, I, I feel like great things come in threes, right? So it would be really cool for us to sort of um, conceptualize this as a, a, a holy trinity. And I hope there's nobody in here who's, who's going to be offended by that. Um, don't mean to offend by that, but sort of like a trinity where we could, you know, we could have the third space for experts. So, so basically a place between the best practices, you know, the how and the why, if you will, uh, and the solutions, the products, the how and with what, you know? So we have the why and then we have the with what, and we have these experts, this really great expert pool in the, in the center of all of this. Really, uh, I see this as a bridge where experts can offer advice on products and solutions, but also, you know, things like conflict resolution in the office, uh, how to onboard you know a new computer system how do you ensure that people in the office are going to uh they won't have their privacy you know their their privacy rights that will be respected and what do you do if someone um how, how do you actually mentor someone who is working out of the office for the first time and, and handling you know pre uh information on their on their home laptop or anything. I mean, how do you manage technology in a war-torn country, uh, for instance, or cross-border relief during natural disasters, that kind of thing. I think if we really want to make the civil society element, um, front, we want to bring that more front and center, really, because that's going to be the conceptual bridge uh, as we move more globally. Um, it's, we see that civil society is facing challenges around the world now, right? The space for, for philanthropy is shrinking. Um, certain resources aren't there anymore. So we have to get more creative with how we share uh, the information. And because TechSoup is essentially everywhere now, I mean, we're everywhere, we have a huge opportunity here to become, you know, the number one thought leader in the nonprofit tech space. I mean, but beyond what we already do to become like a household name, uh, to be part of every facet of nonprofit technology worldwide. And it's ambitious, but I mean, look at where we are now. You know, we're in almost every country now. It's, it's really great that we have matured, that we've grown, grown and matured this far. So that's, that's an idea of the types of conversations that will be happening in the new platform. Um, I mean, it's, we have a great, we have a great foundation for it, I think. It's basically what we have now, just more tailored, and as I said before, maybe a bit more nuanced. Uh, so the other part of this, I think, it's actually a huge part of our lives that goes unnoticed. Um, it's mobile. I mean, and I, I hesitate to say that because it's, there's so much that really goes into that word mobile. And, you know, I, I feel like we're between the developed and the developing worlds, we're, we're really moving at different paces with regard to different types of technology. And, and it's not necessarily what you think. I mean, if you're looking at the developing uh, 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 world now, many countries, I mean, they're adapting to mobile much faster than the developed world. I mean, a lot of us are still sort of tied to our laptops and our desktops. And we're not as engaged with with our mobile, uh, or we don't have as responsive websites using with with our to use with our mobile and tablets um, because a lot of the, the the old sort of the old models are working. So we haven't really had to make that leap. But in the developing world, you know, where they're being outfitted with computers via uh, cell phone, mobile phones for the very first time, they're jumping right in. And they, they're really getting ahead of the curve with regard to mobile. So the new platform, I feel, you know, and we're, we're talking about how to implement this as well, because it's sort of a no-brainer, but obviously it's going to take time and resources and a clear vision of, what, of what we, how we want to uh, implement this. But it will have a mobile component um, that will make talking to each other a lot easier uh, these days. You know, we hear a lot about responsive content and responsive websites, uh, meaning that's that what's displayed, the design of what you want people to read on their phones uh, and tablets mainly, but laptops too. It's, it's making sure this content is made to fit their screen, whatever experience they're having right now 
will be compatible with what we want to show them. That's the idea. So this concept of responsiveness spills over to engagement, I think. Uh, we must be responsive to how people naturally engage. So it's not just the design, it's also the engagement that needs to be responsive. This is basically in the line at the supermarket. Um, this is on the train platform when you're waiting for the train, or you're on the bus between classes, or you're on your lunch break, you know, through, scrolling through your phone, checking your notifications. We want to be right there because there are going to be questions that you need want answered, and you're and there are going to be conversations that you want to join, um, and. And also, it's a nice way for us to stay relevant in the daily lives of our members. Because it, when, when you walk away for the, from the computer, it's very easy to forget that someone is there. But if, if you're, you're always interacting with them in a creative way, you know, no spam, just we're, we're here, we have different things that we're talking about, and remember this conversation that you're involved with. Or you remember that Microsoft software program that you're having trouble with, we have found a solution for you. Ding, 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 here we are. You know, we want to be where people are, um, which right now is in the palm of, of, of their hand, right? So mobile is a big consideration too. Um, and actually, I mean, there's, a, there's, another con there's another aspect to this, uh, and I, you know, I won't go into this as, in as much detail, but, but I feel like content is also a major part of this. And, you know, we do have specialized streams of content now, the blog, and we have a wonderful uh, webinar, very successful. Uh, the blog's doing great. We have a number of things going at TechSoup. I mean, you, you, have, you have organic threads, which is what the forums are about, really, is being more organic uh, in the now. But you also have trending topics that might need a good seed in the forums. Um, or maybe you have a regular poster who, who wants to, to repost this great article, you know, they published last week. Um, and then we have new things like that we'll, we'll be looking at videos, like how to use videos more seamlessly, things like that. So this is one of the sort of look at best practices and things that are really working for the, uh, you know, the, the, the private sector social social world, you know, Facebook and, and, and LinkedIn and Twitter and all those, we can see what's working for them and, and try and integrate some of those things into our daily practice going forward. Um, which actually is a good segue into the events that I wanted to talk about, and, and I'll be very brief with these, um, running out of time. I, Social Good Summit was very successful this year. So this is an annual event coordinated by Mashable here in New York. Uh, coordinated by Mashable, UN Foundation, United um, Nations Development Program, and also the Gates Foundation, although this year Gates wasn't on the masthead, so I'm not sure if they'll be back next year, if it was just sort of a one-year anomaly, but they're usually involved as well. Uh, and it's hosted by 92Y, a great Jewish organization here in New York. Um, great venue, a lot of great people every year. It's just fantastic. Uh, Eli was there with the NetSquared team, and they had an amazing time. I think it was their first time um, at this summit. Uh, this is my, I think this will be my third year, third or fourth, I think, third maybe. Is Tech for Good, and it has a youth spin. So, and there are global meetups. Um, that's a big part. So you can physically sort of see at that moment how big, uh, the the movement is when people check in from other countries and you see all of those people you know cheering and waving and they, they give updates on what's happening it's a really great two days and I encourage everyone here if, if you have a chance to uh, to attend uh, at some point do it it's it's in September every year uh, and you can get there through the mashable I can actually share let me share that do I have that uh, I don't think so oh I don't have that link um, I'll share it with everyone afterwards. It's, you can get there um, through the Mashable website, Social Good Summit, Mashable slash SGS, I think. So this year, celebrities and, and, and high-profile leaders joined the discussions, uh, basically to talk about what's, what's next, like the, the next 15 years of Tech for Change, because as you know, we also had a huge momentous occasion 
uh, you know, passing the SDGs, adopting the, the member states adopted the, the sustainable development goals this year. And so we have this really this new uh, program going forward the next 15 years that really looks at what the Millennium Development Goals did, but puts them in more of a sustainable sort of paradigm so that we can basically work from the ground up uh, this time. A lot more people are involved, you know. So, I mean, it would be great. I feel like it would be awesome if TechSoup joined Social Good Summit at some point. I mean, when we're ready to roll out the new platform, this is something I've been thinking about. We would, we would need to synergize around a particular topic or campaign, um, something with solid engagement, uh, like Story Makers, for instance. That would be a good one. So, depending on when the new platform goes live, you know, this may be 2017. Maybe we can um, coordinate with uh, the UN Foundation and secure a uh, presentation during those two days. And we can, you know, have 10 minutes for our story makers campaign and have everyone rally around a specific thread or, or do something fun in the forums and have and sort of seed it that way. I think that would be a great opportunity for us. So I met with Eli and, and the NetSquared lead organizers. I was inspired to see the level of interest and the potential that we have to grow the community um, just from that single input. And there were, I think, six or eight of us all together, maybe six, seven of us. Uh, lots going on there. And uh, actually, side note, Eli and I are putting together a plan now that, that will integrate the two spaces. And um, we'll be presenting this plan to, to, uh, to, to the team to get their feedback. And, and so, you know, maybe at some point, uh, Rianne and I can come back and, and follow up with an update if you know, depending on how, how that goes. Hopefully, maybe before the holidays, but definitely after after the holidays, we'll have something to talk about. Um, oh, and I'd like, I have a link actually here that I want to share with everybody. Let me put this into the nearby chat. This is a Storify uh, that Eli put together for the NetSquared regional gathering. So uh, sort of put faces to the faces to the names I just talked about, make it a little bit more personal. Um, so yeah, as I said, you know, also in September was the UN summit where member states adopted the UN Sustainable Development Goals. I, I attended a number of side meetings, um, UNDP, OECD, Ford Foundation. Uh, very, very, very fortunate to be able to sort of join those meetings and be a fly on the wall to see what's happening. I mean, well, I was I was very disappointed to see certain things omitted in in the finals. Um, I mean, namely provisions for the LGBTQI community. Uh, since there were a lot more actors involved this time, I mean, one ninety three states, I think, did, or one I can't remember the exact number, but many nations involved, many governments involved, and uh, it's a very contentious issue right now. As you all know, LGBTQI globally is very, very contentious issue. And there were some people who just did not, you know, we, we needed to soften the language. And unfortunately, that was omitted. Um, so in the equality or inequality uh, SDG, I think it's nine or 10, one of those, there isn't anything that really, um, you know, verbatim protects LGBTQI or really works towards that. So, so overall, the adoption does mark a huge win for the SUSTEV community. Um, and it's, I mean, in my opinion, I think it's an exciting new era for social good because it really opens up a lot of avenues that weren't there before. And I would like to see TechSoup take the lead on, on some of those. Uh, I mean, one big takeaway, for instance, was data. You know, that's something that we can definitely contribute to that space. Stories, um, the importance of, of sharing information and capturing stories and data visualization, story storytelling, uh, a lot of that stuff that's happening right now. Laverne Cox from Orange is the New Black, um, she's a, a new spokes, spokeswoman for uh, the transgender community. She talked about data and the trans community. So... And, and the, there are a lot of holes there. You know, we, we really don't have a lot of information in specific uh, demographic right now. So that's one, that's one area I, th I feel like we could, we could really um, promote. And then Charlize Theron, actually, she spoke about AIDS and HIV education. She's South African. 
so that was very very close to her and being in Africa seeing seeing the the developments with with that there um, very emotional actually very emotional time with her the idea is that we can do more and I believe the TechSoup forums is the perfect place for us to take up these issues with our community and it can be a beacon so all of us who are involved and all of the, our friends and colleagues who we pull in we can definitely be a beacon uh, so others who aren't involved and see us you know working on these issues and involved in these issues can come in and we can hook them with the technology I mean people need the technology that's why they come to TechSoup right so so it's there are a number of different uh, entry points in, into TechSoup via the TechSoup forums, and I think that's what we'll be exploring over the next few months. Um, the, the, the last event that I wanted to talk about was uh, in Turkey. Kim Si Yok Mu um, is an international NGO based in Istanbul. It carries out humanitarian aid and development in uh, 100 plus countries. Um, each year it has a different theme. That This conference in May that, that I spoke at uh, was invited to speak at the, the International Conference on Social Media for Good. Last year was on peace building, um, and this year was on social media. So the aim of this conference was to, to basically highlight new theories and practices around using new social technologies, emerging technologies for, uh, for the sector, for social good. Um, my presentation offered a conceptual framework for a community-based uh, social networking applications for CSOs, so like a distributed social networking application, um, as opposed to centralized, which is what we see with many of our social networks now. Uh, my hope is to develop a framework on a local level um, to basically pull in the actors to figure out who the actors in, are in, in that community and how we're going to pull in private and public sectors to, to use innovations and solid governance to design a system that works um, so that we can move our cities and communities forward in a sustainable manner. So just knowing that TechSoup is um, present in all of these countries and that we were taking an active role uh, in the, the technological capacity of many you know, community organizations in these countries, just knowing that alone gives me hope that there is, like there's a chance for us to actually create a system of communication that works. Um, because right now I believe that everything is just far too siloed. So that, that's, what, that's also another uh, topic that, that we can bring into the forums and, and really sort of propel that forward, give, you know, at some point, those local communities in other countries uh, a platform where they can come and meet, you know, give them each their, their own branded space, see how that takes off, you know, come on in, you want to join TechSoup? Um, you're doing great work, you're using our products, Here, let's give you a dedicated space so you can talk about the issues in your local region because sometimes Facebook doesn't work, sometimes the local you know, governments, uh, it's, it's really difficult to, to maintain a website on your own or uh, any, a host of different issues. You know? uh, uh, domains is another issue, I know Jerry Curry at NSET is, is working on um, the, the new domain um, uh, solution and dot ngo uh, dot ong uh, basically the, the 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 English versus the Latin version of um, non governmental organizations that will eventually sort of supersede the uh, dot org which has been in many cases sort of uh, co opted by you know different uh, political organizations that are par parading as as social good organization. So it's about making that space sort of more transparent and more reliable in the end. All of these, I feel, are very important topics. And what we're doing with the forums right now is just the beginning. Um, there's so much to be done, and it's an exciting time. And I really, really, really hope that you all get involved uh, and that if you have any questions, please send them forward. But really, come to the forums now. You know, set up set up a, 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 a profile, upload an avatar, put your bio in there, let us know something about your nonprofit or tech experience, uh, what you're doing right now. You know, even if you don't see a conversation or a thread or a branch that, that you want to dive into right away, I'm telling you now is the time to get in because once we um, gain momentum with some of these things, we're really going to need 
a, a grassroots team of individuals who are familiar with the forum's experience to really be our lifeline back to the old days to say, okay, this is how far we've come forward. Hey, I came in right at the transition or right before the transition, so I can tell you dot, 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 and dot. And we can take that uh, small community, uh, that grassroots community that we're building now and really build that. Um, that's what I want to see, you know, so there's a lot of room for growth. Um, but uh, so that's the, that's basically the, the gist. Um, and I'm sorry, I think I went over. <laughs> Thanks. <a> little bit. <laughs> it's OK. Um, no, I mean, thank you, uh, Chris, for coming. And I'm, you know, I the uh, our the nonprofit commons members kind of vary in regards to time here, but a lot have been here for years, sort of and seen that evolution, um, and been there kind of side by side with Glitter, and you know have also kind of helped um, um, and have at least awareness of that 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 evolution of the forums too. Um, so yeah, I, I think I think this could be an interesting opportunity, and I'm all for kind of kind of cross collaboration of like what you said with NetSquared and nonprofit commons and like the forums and how there's very similar um, kind of interests and goals and, and that we could kind of work together on and, and kind of help share information to the community. So I think those are all great things. Um, and then we have a question. So uh, from Loud Laffer, Chris, I may have missed this, but will the changes in the forums involve a change in the platform technology used for the forums? Um, James, yes, absolutely. That is a huge element. Um, it's the largest element, really. I mean, there, there are a few things that are working in tandem, right? You have to um, work in branding. You have to work in engagement, but also technology. The technology component will need to be... Yes, we're working on that for sure. We're looking at a number of solutions, and, and we've found um, a way forward that I think will be, uh, people will like it. So. Yeah, that's huge. So then what happens to, is there a way to transition over all the kind of older, con older content and kind of knowledge share that's already been put through for all those years? Like, what happens? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're, we actually have people who are already working on that. Um, because that's going to be a huge endeavor to transfer that information on um, the legacy, you know, conversations and threads and things. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that for sure, we will definitely, we won't lose any information. Yep, and Glitter has, I was adding in too that, you know, that you got, they're considering a few platforms um, and, and looking very seriously at one and that this would be the fourth iteration of the forums platform so that's kind of good to know for context mm -hmm, definitely any other questions that's a good question by the way thank you for that um, and a question from Buffy do you think TechSoup will ever promote our meeting here at the Nonprofit Commons for uh, for another form of connecting and collaborating, which is a good one. I, I see as a lot as you know, a, sort of as valid as like the Net Squared things. You know, where um, though distributed, we're like a community of nonprofit, you know, uh, professionals. And in fact, we kind of have a, a network of networks because we're so distributed. We're not just one. But I don't know your thoughts mm -hmm. on that, Chris. Yes, I mean, I think, I, you know, I, I don't want to put any words in anyone's mouth because I'm not the boss, but yes, of course, like, I, I feel like this is, why not? Like, this is, you know, the, the forums are basically, and, and I feel like it's going to be, you know, the, the sort of the new structure is going to be a little bit more facilitating for our partnerships across the board, you know, so where we don't have any solid, uh, plans, you know, on how we're going to do things, there are definitely ways for us to cross-pollinate and to cross-market. I mean, even now, you know, like, uh, we can, Rianne and, and, and I, we were, we're, we've been talking about sort of how to cross-promote, and that, that can certainly include, you know, a, a thread, a dedicated thread to, to what you guys are doing here if you have a special event coming up. I mean, yeah, talk to me. Yeah, no, that would be great. Um, and um, yeah, as Buffy mentioned too, uh, at one point, Nonprofit Commons was listed actually under the site um, in the same way that like Net Squared was, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so um, 
and uh, oh, yeah, and, Gl and glitter. Back to glitter mentioned that Caravan is a division of Texas Tube. Absolutely. I mean, we have some really amazing brands that we. I see a lot of potential of bringing those together, and that's some of what I've been working on is conceptualizing that so I can bring it to the team to to get some feedback. Great, great. Um, so any other like last things before we kind of let Chris go and then um, and uh, hopefully have uh, some time for Zinnia to chat too. So uh, take care, Glitter, and anyone else who just was leaving. Thanks, Glitter. Take care. And um, yeah, and let's let's thank Chris for being here. I mean, and hopefully this can be kind of a. Um, I'm hoping that this is like an ongoing collaboration, at the, even between you on the forums, definitely, and us on this side in nonprofit comments. You know, um, we kind of meet here collectively, but then we all have our networks around the world since we are, you know, geo distributed. So mm -hmm. definitely. Um, well, I just want to say again, thank you everyone for having me, and thank you for being patient. I know I went over. I, I, I you know, I'm sorry for taking up a uh, little bit extra uh, of extra time but I do hope that it was helpful um, and that we that we can use this moment to, to really solidify uh, our relationship going forward you know get some things moving so thank you very much it's been, it's been a pleasure and I hope to see you all soon I'll, I'll come back in as soon as I get um, a chance yeah yeah work. and definitely um, you know whenever you want to come back um, and even like I know you were chatting with Eli too you know Eli has been bef here before and has an avatar as well so you know you can even both come back or however you want to sort it um, you know I think we all have kind of very aligned goals so oh that would be great <laughs> we just had another question for wisdom seeker the register uh, sign up you can actually here's the the link to the TechSoup forums and when you get there, um, there's a place where there's a link. I'm signed in right now, so I don't know exactly where that is. But there's, you can see where you can sign up. I think it's the login sign up. And then that should guide you through. If you have any questions at all whatsoever, please let me know. Contact us. We'll, we'll clear those up for you. Great. All right. Um, and say hello. Like once you do register, go into the introduce yourself branch and say hello. And we'll go from there. Cool. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, James. All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Well, have a great rest of your day, Chris. And um, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'll share this recording with you um, once later on, and so you have that and uh, the notes as well. And um, yeah, thank you. And um, just as wanted to mention, as Buffy was saying, yes, we've been doing this for al almost eight years now. These weekly meetings, so we are mm -hmm. you're solid. So, um, so Fantastic. thanks again. Thanks again, Chris. Thank you. See you all. Okay, let me. I'm going to teleport out of here now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right. Bye bye. Okay. Um, I'm going to swap.